Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. First off, Confucius say, rectification of society begins with rectification of language. The way we talk to each other is really important. And if you only look at the media or the news, the way people trash talk to each other, can't find common ground to negotiate, cancel each other so quickly, shame each other so quickly. The first principle in yoga is ahimsa. And ahimsa is not just doing bodily injury or violence to other people, but it's verbal abuse as well. So we all learn through this path to speak more kindly, more gently to other people. And especially when people continue to identify themselves with the balls of tension that your ego and the petty convulsive self create for you through attachment, then you realize it's so easy to speak from that place in a vituperative way, in a venomous way. But once you start to change and realize there's no demand to conform, you choose to conform then you have to accept the fact that there's going to be a little conflict at the beginning of consciousness. So one of the things they say is put on your crossing shawl. In so many cultures, <clears throat> there's a way of kind of covering yourself in meditation. The talb, the talus, the shawl, whatever word you give it, indicates you're kind of wrapping yourself in spirit or creating like a barrier between yourself and the material plane. Right, the world of Babylon or Mammon and the world of spirit. And so even if it's only temporar temporarily, you go in there and you commune with what's called your Ishta Devata. You ritualize your life by making contact with your own form of higher power. And when you do, you realize that you have images inside of yourself, archetypes, portraits of instincts deep that have proved their evolutionary adaptive survival benefit. I call it the inner child, the inner teen, the inner elder. Something inside you wakes up. They say just as an elephant wakes up upon seeing a tiger in its dream, so the disciple wakes up upon meeting the guru, somebody who makes you realize that there's a different identification, much broader, much deeper, much more abstract, and for some people may be invisible, but nonetheless may be more real than the things we think are materially real. And one of the beautiful things that yoga does for you is, first of all, it heightens your sensory awareness. So your ability to perceive through eros, the connectedness, the relatedness, the beauty of sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell, and the importance of keeping those alive as you get older, because so much deficiency doesn't begin with years. The impairment comes from not using those senses. And as you know, perfumiers get a better sense of smell as they get older. Somaliers get a better taste of wine as they get older. People who play musical instruments get better as the years go on. So we don't want to think that aging impairs us, but when we're deficient in those areas, then we see the aging process much more. So as we used to say in the old days, turn on, tune in, and drop out, you turn on to your senses. Be awake to everything. And then remember, use imagery. So important because imagery creates new brain synapses. It's not true you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You have to stretch your imagination and not look to the leadership in Washington. As I always say, they have rigor mortis of the imagination. They can't think of anything better than what they're already doing. So once you understand this, you lapse into the practices that take you into what's called timelessness. You go beyond the moment, beyond memory, beyond even future, aspiration into full awareness of reality in the present. And then when you do, 
you're able to answer the question at an individual, familial, or communal level. And that is, are you the one who is to come? Or should we look for another?